Years ago, I was brought into a school as the new ed tech lead for the district by my principal at the time, Kelly Wilkins, who I've talked about 10 million times. And it was something that I, I wasn't really into education at the time. I was ready to quit. I really didn't like it, but I decided to give it one more year. And in that year, everything changed for me. And it was because of the impact of a great principal, which is why I wrote the book, What Makes a Great Principal. And I remember actually Kelly saying to me nearing the end of that year, she said, hey, we actually have a certain amount of money uh, for technology. How would you spend it? And I'm thinking, well, I'm a teacher. Why would you ask me this question? This is your role as a principal. And as we were talking about it, she said, well, that's why we hired you. We hired you to kind of guide us that you are the person with the expertise in this area. So I want you to kind of walk away Think about how you would spend this money and actually come back and tell me how we should spend the money as a, you know, a school. Now, I was also like teaching uh, grade five to seven that year, teaching math and, you know, some other subjects. And this is part of my role, but I was still a teacher in that um, school. I walked away and I was really thoughtful about how we spend this money because I knew that my decision would impact other teachers. They would impact other staff members there too. So I had to be really thoughtful because I didn't want to be the person who made a decision that my colleague would be upset about. So I went and got some feedback, got some thoughts, got some ideas, and then I actually came back with a proposal. The thing that Kelly did really, really amazingly well, and something I really thought about, was she really created a space where everyone had ownership. They didn't feel like they had ownership. They had actual ownership over the direction of the building. And in my conversation today with Michelle Krell, she talked about this concept of leaderful. That do we create a space where people, you know, see the impact of their work, not only in their specific role, but throughout the school, that they know that what they do truly, truly matters um, and will have a long lasting impact. And that's why I really loved having a conversation with Michelle. I am so blessed to be able to uh, work with her being the uh, one of the keynotes at MESPA, the uh, Minnesota Elementary School Principal Association Conference in February 2025. She's an incredible leader. She is so passionate about the role of principal because she knows how much of an impact it can have on others. So I really hope you enjoyed this conversation as much as I did. Welcome back to another episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. Hey everyone, this is George Kroos. Welcome back to another episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. I am so blessed to have Michelle Krell, who is the Executive Director of MESPA, the Minnesota Elementary School Principal Association, which I will actually be joining as a keynote in February of 2025. I can't believe we're at almost at 2025. We're almost there, right? So, yep. and uh, Michelle is not only uh, taught, been a principal, she worked at Central Office, and she serves in this role. When you listen to Michelle, one of the things I truly love is you can feel how passionate she is about the job of being a principal specifically, which I absolutely love, which obviously is a blessing to that organization. Because if you hated being a principal, you probably wouldn't be the best fit. Is that fair? <laughs> fair. <laughs> That's fair to say. So we're going to talk a little bit about the conference, a little bit about your role. But Michelle, if you can just tell everyone who you are, what you do today, how you got there, I think it's a great place to start. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so this is my 33rd year in education. I don't know how time flies that fast, but 33 years in education. I did 12 years as an elementary teacher. I, you know, I taught just about every grade level, first, second, fourth, fifth grade. Um, and then I transitioned to be a principal. So I would, was an elementary principal for 10 years. Um, and uh, in two different schools. And then I went to the middle school and I was a middle school principal for two years. And then I went to central office and was, um, I, I was director of teaching and learning and then assistant superintendent. So this is my 15th month as the, as the executive director of MESPA. And, um, you know, when I think about, you know, the impact being a principal was like the best gig I ever had. Absolutely loved it. Although this is the best gig I've ever had right now is being executive director, because I think that, um, when I reflect impact is so important and being able to fulfill your mission in life. And my, my mission in life is, you know, to make a positive difference. And um, now I have that, the opportunity to make 
a difference with hundreds of thousands of kids, hopefully right. in Minnesota, you know, as I help support the principals, but, um, you know, being a principal, it, it's, it is the most impactful person in a building because they have the most influence, the most influence on culture and systems and the learning that goes on. And so to be able, leadership development is something that's really passionate. I'm really passionate about. And so I think too often we, we push through a, a program to become a principal and we don't learn enough about how to you know, leadership skills. What are some leadership moves that I need to have? What are some, what are some things that I can do for small wins and what are some pitfalls I need to stay away from? And so I'm really passionate about being able to support principals, um, especially our newest principals. And so um, one of the things I've done here at MESPA is we started a, a new principal um, mentorship program. That's a year long mentorship program where we support principals. Um, I do professional development with them monthly. And then we also have um, mentors. So we have two mentors with five new principals. So we have a cohort of seven principals who can meet every other week for 30 minutes and support each other and um, support the good work and help make those decisions to help them um, be successful principals. Because it's a hard job. There's a lot of nuances and it's it's go, 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 go. So figuring out like, how do I manage all of those things and still, you know, be good, not as a, as a principal, but also be good at home with my family. So, yeah, that's, that's, that one is a tough one, right? Yeah. That's a, a lot of people have that. And I think it's really important to kind of find that divide. Um, this is something I've been better at over the last few years. And I think it's, I actually think it's made me better at my, what I do, as opposed to like, I feel when you're so immersed in something, you don't notice anything. I, I use this analogy, I think just the other day, with somebody, um, like when you're in a bad relationship, I know it sounds horrible, but when you're in a bad relationship, you don't notice how bad it is until you like kind of step out of it and you're like, Ooh, that was bad. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I think sometimes when you're like, when you're so obsessed with your work, you're so obsessed with your job and you're like in the middle of it all the time, you don't notice how things are bad. But when you kind of like have that ability to kind of step away, you kind of have some, you get perspective in a totally different way. So it is, it can make you better at what you do because a lot of times, you know, we give advice on like bad relationships, like, hey, I wouldn't have done that, blah, 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 because we're outside of it. But if you're always immersed in a bad relationship, a job that can be you know, like totally overwhelming, you often give advice to others that you don't take yourself. And I think that to me is really, really important. When you're talking about this with the new principal thing, I'm really curious about this because you, you, this is like a huge conversation in education uh, about basically a teacher shortage. There's not enough teachers in the profession. People don't want to teach anymore. Is this true with principals too? Like, is this, is this happening? Are we, is it harder to recruit? I don't know if it's different in Minnesota versus, you know, you know, other States, but are we having, are you having like issues where people don't want to be principals anymore? Is it not like something aspired to do? Or like, do you see that at all? I think that, I mean, we have people that still want to go into the profession, but I think sometimes they see how difficult it is because of the leader, maybe that they've been watching and look, it's hard. And we have principals that are leaving earlier than we would probably normally see them leaving. Right. Um, and that's kind of one of my missions is how can we bring back the joy to the principalship? Because I honestly love, I mean, was it hard? Yeah, absolutely. Every day was different, but there was so much joy in the work that that I felt like I did because I was making impact. And I think that it's hard if you're always in the throes of solving problems and, and things all the time that, like you said, you can't step back and actually see right. some of the good things. And so, you know, one of my hopes is that we can, we can start, you know, having principals focus on, you know, leading, you know, doing things that bring them joy, leading with hope and gratitude. I believe that, you know, the school, our schools provide the most hope for, for a society. And so if we can do great things with students, if we can have teachers that are happy in their job and principals that are finding the joy in it, we have a great school. We have great things that happen. Things just work well. And it's, and it really comes down to that, that culture piece of, mm -hmm. you know, all of us together supporting each other, the relationships that we build with each other. Um, and so, you know, my goal is that, you know, we make the principalship something that's very manageable. Cause I feel like in the last four years, it hasn't been as manageable as it used to be. And so how do we bring back, bring back the things that are tried and true and they work. And so with our principal mentorship program, um, I do all the PD with them and I really focus in on like boots on the ground. What do you need? How, 
what are the things that are going to be most impactful? What are the principal strategies that are going to be most impactful for you as a leader so that you can um, lead? And I think you can't lead alone. Like you have to create, I always said, I, and this isn't even a word, but I, I would always say, you know, I want to, I want a leader full building. I want a building full of leaders. So every year I would identify five people secretly in my brain that I felt could use should should lead in some way. And then I would tap them on the shoulder and they would be honored that I asked them to help me with something. And then we'd build those and they build these leadership skills. And then next, the next year I'd pick five different staff members and it didn't have to be a teacher. It could be a paraprofessional. It could be my custodian. It could be, it could be any number of people. But if you, if you create this, this, um, this atmosphere, this culture where everybody feels like they have a really good say, they have an important say and a leadership role, um, just their satisfaction and their job goes up and they might be working harder than they ever have, but they feel good about the work that they're doing and they love to come to work every day and happy teachers make happy kids. And so, you know, that's, that's my hope is that our, you know, we continue to find ways to make our schools joyful places for kids and teachers and staff members and principals. Listen, I don't know if leaderful is a word. Okay. But Can we make a word? It is going to be a word today because I wrote it down. That is the title of the podcast, the podcast now and make sure you get credit for it. So awesome. it's a word that's been made up today. <laughs> I know, it it's not a word, but it is now today. It's a word today. It's a word today. You know, so I know we mentioned what makes you a principal. That, and I, I remember like when coming up with the concept of it, I didn't, when Alice and I talked about it, I didn't want to write it because I thought I was an amazing principal. That's not why I want to write it. I wanted to write about it because I had an amazing principal and really did not just change my career, um, you know, didn't change me just professionally. It changed me personally. And Kelly Wilkins, one of the greatest honors I ever had was when I sent her a book and she had no clue that I wrote about her. And she's like, like, I have a book, Louie, that's written about me and just amazing. And it just made me feel really well. And one of the things that, you know, when you talk about this idea, this concept of leaderful, the thing that she did that was really amazing to me was as a teacher, I felt so much ownership over the entirety of the school. And it was something that really, really mattered to me because when I became a principal, there's almost like, it's almost that, that just is, you feel an ownership. The, the trick of being a great principal, I truly believe is how do you actually create that space where people don't just feel they have ownership over the building, but they truly do. And they can see, it's not just what they're doing in their role, in their classroom, it's how they impact the entirety of the community. And she just did that so well. And one of the things I, I just think about this all the time, she would like, I would be in the middle of doing something for her. And I'm like, how did she get me to do this? Like I would, I would have done anything for her. Like she just, you know, and I'm like, how is she like, she's so good. Like I was, I would, like go through walls for this person because she just made me feel so incredibly valued. Right. And I don't know, is that like, I think that when you, I wonder if you think about that, you know, like that's kind of the, what we're trying to do, right? You want people, not that you don't want to, you don't want to trick people into doing stuff. They don't want to do that. I'm not saying that, but they feel that they feel that there's that sense of pride, not just in what's in their classroom, but the entirety of the school. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I, and I think that that's a, a, a great example of a great leader that, and that's, that's what we want. I always, I, I never wanted things to be my idea. Like I wanted to plant some seeds, let them kind of grow and then have a teacher come and say, Hey, have we ever thought about this? And what a great idea. And let's talk about that. You know, I believed in collaboration, site leadership. Um, and, and I feel like the best ideas came through that way. And I never, ever wanted, you know, to take credit. You know, there's a, there's a quote that I absolutely love. Um, and I don't even know who wrote it, but it's, it's think like a hero. Who can I help today? Be an innovator. What else can I try? Refuse to be ordinary. Um, per so pursue excellence and achieve it and then celebrate, but take no credit. And I think that's what, that's what great leaders do. They do all of those things. Well, you know, this is, a I I've brought this up several times on the podcast and I'm, I, you know, I don't know if this is going to, you're going to want to kick me out from coming there when I tell you this, but I, like, I, I fully admit that I have an ego that I want to do really, really well. 
And it's not like I want to crush people, maybe a little bit, <laughs> you know, but it's kind of this, there's a, ment- what I realized really quickly in administrative, in administrative roles that you can feed that ego by excelling only if you get other people to excel because of your work. Do you know, do you know what I mean? Like it, there is kind of a point where I felt like my success was in, you know, competition with everybody else. But actually I found that my ego is really, really fed by making everyone else do really, really well as an administrator. Is that fair to say? Like, I, I don't, and I know like, it's kind of like, oh, you shouldn't have an ego in your principal. I'm like, well, no, you can have one, but like what, what would actually really make you a great leader is actually people excelling because of you, not, you know, no one does better than me because I'm the principal. And I think I hear those stories too, right? Like I get all the side teachers, like oh, our principal, like needs all the credit for everything and stuff like that. And there's an ego thing there too, but I think it goes into like an arrogance or insecurity, but I think you can have confidence do really, really well. But in, in administration, specifically the principal role, I feel you do really, really well when everyone else does well because of the supports you're providing them. And I would agree. And that's what you want as a leader is that everybody is happy and doing well and working hard and you are moving and shaking as a school and doing innovative things and you're meeting the needs of kids. And I wouldn't call that an ego. I would call that pride. You're proud of the work that's being done in your school. And what principal doesn't want to be proud about the work that's being done? Because pride goes across, like it, it not only is you're prideful as a, as a principal, but your teachers, your families, your community, they're proud of your school, you know? Totally. So, you know, you know, it's actually funny. Um, so I became a principal and I talk about Kelly all the time. She was the assistant superintendent when I became a principal. And what was really interesting about her, her role, and I'll never forget this, that some people will come there for like one or two years and they'd be gone. And there's, there's two reasons typically. And some would say for like 15, 20 years and they become the best teachers ever. The, the two reasons I would say is that she could like just bring out the best in you and you would go find like a different role or whatever, because she just brought some out of you. I was only there for one year and I was like, I hate education. I'm going to quit. I'll give it one more year. And then I'm an assistant principal the next year. And I was like, well, how did this happen? Like, this was like totally different. And it was like, a, and I, I'm not the only story uh, under her leadership like that, right? People went on to different roles. The other role, the other thing too was, you know, if you weren't great, she would, she's like, you know, like if this is not, and it wasn't like she was mean about it, but she's, she would be honest, like, hey, this is like, do you want to do that? You're not, this is not for you necessarily. And sometimes that's a hard conversation that we have to have, but it's actually a, a kind conversation in the sense that I don't want someone to do something they hate for 30 years, right? Like who wants to be that person? And I remember this one conversation, I'll never forget it. Um, somebody said like was bugging her and they were kind of like it was like you know like joking but there's like some serious like oh you can't keep anyone like in your staff she's like i'd rather have like someone awesome for two years than someone terrible for 15. i was like that's a pretty good that was such a good line i just i was like i like slow clap right there i was like that is like an amazing because that and then you know what she attracted to her school just people that were eager because they knew she'd bring out the best in you right so i just i just I like I honestly just one of my favorite people in the world because my life is totally different because of her. All right. Okay. So this is, I'm going to be joining you. This is kind of put me on the spot. We I'm hopefully you'll send this out to, you know, people as we come out to the conference and I hope they get to see how brilliant you are. Uh, You know, but tell me like if I'm successful, um, you know, in my job, when I come out there, what does that look like to you? Like, how would you know if I did a, a good job with your group of principals? Cause I, I know like, I feel a lot of pressure now cause I know how important this is to you and how important the rules are. So I'm like, I might be a little bit, I might get sick. I might get sick. No. <laughs> I will just, not. I will not. No, I'm, you I'm, know what? I know you're gonna knock it out of the park. Cause obviously I've, you, you've spoke to, you know, you came to Otana, did a great job there. Um, you'll be successful. And I would say like my goal for the conference is that principals leave with hope, inspiration, ideas, but also an opportunity to be reflective in their practices. You know, are there things that are going really well for them or things that maybe, maybe they need to change up. So I always, I always hope that, you know, principals leave with, um, like strategies that they maybe can implement ideas, um, 
but but definitely a reflective piece to continue to to make sure that they're doing everything they possibly can to make a difference in the lives of students in their buildings and in their schools. And so, um, yeah, and I, and, you know, you have a great sense of humor and I, so I, I'm positive you're going to do great, but. Wait till you yeah, list all the awards I've won. Want them to leave inspired and motivated. When you list all the awards I've won before I start, this guy has never won an award for any, <laughs> this is why we got him. We'll do a little Amazon card drawing before and we'll be like, oh, <laughs> the winner is George Carroll. Uh, I will be honest with you. There's a lot of pressure because first of all, I know you already have great principals like Brad Gustafson, truly admire him. He's one of my favorite leaders in the oh. entire world. But you also had Allison Apsey there, who's my co-author. And she, there's, I don't know anyone. Actually, I think there's going to be a close tie who's more like loves the role of principal between you and Allison. Like, it's pretty close. Like, I love it, but you two, like, live and breathe it in a totally different way. And just so, I have big shoes to fill because Allison is absolutely incredible. She's such a good friend. Like, like as, as nice as she seems, she's way nicer. <laughs> she's just the <laughs> nicest person I've ever met in my life. That it's almost no. like, you're a little too nice. What's going on? Why are you so nice? So she's, she's I, she, I love her to pieces. So, um, I know you got a million things to do. You took time out of your day to be with me. So I just want to say thank you. I can't wait to see you. I can't wait to, um, and I'm going to like, I'm, you're getting a hard time. I'm going to, I'm going to be honest with you. You're getting a hard time when I come there. <laughs> <laughs> we are looking forward to it. It's going to be an amazing conference. You know, yeah. this is like the must attend event for elementary principals across the state. And so it is three days of packed a packed agenda for keynote speakers, 42 breakout sessions, yeah. our award ceremony. It's going to be amazing. So, this, so honored you're going to be with us. Okay, I ask you this. What if you, like, can someone outside of Minnesota come? Because someone's going to be listening to this. I want to go. Can they come outside from out here? Uh, no? Yeah, I think we have a, we have a non-member um, rate. So, yeah, if, if you're from another state, yeah, absolutely. Oh. This is a place to be because it it's a, it's a pretty amazing event. All right. Okay. Well, positive energy. Well, obviously with you leading the way too. So I, I, what a blessing to, to sit down with you. I, I like love doing this because I just get to know people in a totally different way and you've just been awesome. So I, I hope everyone gets to connect with you. I can't wait to see you in person. It's going to be so much fun. I can't wait to see the other speakers too. Cause I know like, I'm not the only person there. So I feel really blessed to you have a really amazing lineup. I'm not going to say who's there because I don't think that's, <laughs> that's your job, not mine. So made it public yet, but yeah. It's coming. So anyways, yeah. thanks for listening, Michelle. Thanks so much for your time today. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Take care.